You're looking at a dramatic demonstration of how fire sprinklers save lives and protect property. Hi, I'm Ron Hazelton. Live side-by-side -side burns like this are being used by fire departments around the country. These demonstrations present an unparalleled opportunity to teach fire safety. They'll leave a lasting impression on people of all ages and showcase the professionalism of your fire department. In fact, I can think of no better way to ensure a captive audience for fire safety education. Side-by-side -side demos set the stage so you can explain and dramatically illustrate a fire's deadly speed. They also help you teach the importance of early warning, escape planning, and the unique effectiveness of fire sprinklers. And once the demonstration is over, your department personnel can examine burn patterns, practice fire scene photography, and conduct a mini overhaul drill during cleanup. This powerful education tool can be staged easily and inexpensively by your fire department. This video will show you how it's done. Let's get started. Choose a level location with easy access for vehicles, equipment, and personnel, and room for your audience. Each demo unit consists of two rooms. The overall footprint of each room is 8 feet by 8 feet. Both structures should face the audience area roughly 4 feet apart, depending on wind direction. You want to have your audience set back 30 feet from the front of the two rooms. The initial construction costs are approximately $500. Now you can offset that investment by working with local merchants. In exchange for donated building materials, you can provide merchants with public recognition at the time of your demonstration. Now once it's built, the sprinkler room is reusable and with minor touch-up between uses will last for many years. The unsprinklered room where flashover will occur will obviously require some repair following each use. Now you might find it helpful to print out the instructional materials in the HFSC side-by-side -side kit you received or from the HFSC website, homefiresprinkler.org, and refer to them as you watch the video. Here's a list of the materials you'll need to build two reusable side-by-side -side rooms. And here is a list of the tools you'll need. You'll find both lists in your kit. If you have a three or four person crew, the rooms can be built in just a morning or an afternoon. It'll take longer with fewer personnel. You need an engine company for the demonstration. A qualified apparatus engineer will confirm the water supply to the sprinkler unit as well as a minimum one and three quarter inch hand line charged to extinguish the flashover fire. A backup line of equivalent size should be stretched and available for use. If an engine is used to supply the sprinkler system, idle pressure is usually sufficient, but this should be confirmed with the sprinkler contractor on site prior to the demonstration. At least two structural firefighters should be on hand in full protective gear, including SCBAs. You'll want to have at least two workers for breakdown, cleanup, and salvage operations, and for storage of the units. Now, it's a good idea to have a dumpster on hand to dispose of the debris. If you're short on personnel, look to the Boy and Girl Scouts and other youth clubs for helpers. If you plan to reuse the rooms for more than one demonstration, use plywood or OSB board, as we are, to sheet the panels of the sprinkled room and the floor panels of the unprotected room. The wall and ceiling panels of the unprotected flashover room should be sheeted in drywall. Start by organizing the wood studs. For each panel, use two 2x4x93 two by by inch wood studs for the end framing and four 2x4x93 two by by inch studs for the interior and outside framing. Secure all studs with 3 inch screws, 16 inches on center. Once the frame is together, attach the 4 by 8 by 3 8 inch OSB board or plywood. Use 1 and 5 8 inch drywall screws. Repeat this process eight more times and you'll have a total of nine panels, seven wall panels and two ceiling panels. Number these panels one through four and six through 10. Numbering will make reassembly very easy. Now you need to cut and assemble one wall that's narrower than the rest. This will be panel number five. Use two 2x4x39 and 3 quarter inch studs for the end framing. 
used three 2x4x93 inch boards for the exterior and interior studs. Secure the studs with 3 inch wood screws, 19 and 7 8 inches on center. Next, attach a 4x8x3 8 inch OSB board to the frame. You've completed all the panels you need for one room. Simply repeat these steps to build the unprotected flashover room. The floor panels, 11 and 12, should be covered in OSB board or plywood. Panels 13 through 20, the walls and ceiling, are sheeted in drywall. We'll assemble the sprinklered room first. Start by putting the floors together. Floors are built with two 4x8 panels. Take a look at the construction diagrams in your kit. The floor panels are numbered 1 and 2. Hinge the panels together, placing the hinges two feet from each end. Hinges are used to make the disassembly and reassembly easy. Just remove or insert the hinge pins. We're using three and a half inch hinges. Panels four and five are placed on the rear left corner of the floor as you look from front to back and hinge to the floor. Next, add wall panel number three to complete the left wall and secure it to the floor. Then add panel 6, the remaining rear wall panel, and secure it to the floor. Next, the right wall section, diagram panel 7 and 8, are secured to the floor. The ceiling panels are numbers 9 and 10 on the diagram. The crew should wear helmets when assembling the ceiling panels. For safety, you should have a ladder on the inside and outside of the unit. Pick up the back roof, panel number 9, and raise the unit to a person halfway up the inside ladder who will raise the panel onto the wall panels with the help of a person on the outside ladder. Square the roof with the back wall. Hinge the roof panel to each wall panel. Repeat this procedure for the front roof panel, number 10. Attach the header by hinging it to the framing. The header acts to hold in the heat of the fire. On the back wall, drill a three inch diameter circle. This hole will provide outside access so you can ignite the fire in a trash can placed in the back corner of the room. Tape any visible cracks with white duct tape to eliminate air leaks. This helps to minimize damage to the unit and contain the smoke. For maximum effect, you want the demonstration to depict a realistic home setting. So paint the surfaces with a coat of primer. For the unprotected flashover room, pre-drill seven holes in a sheet of 4 foot by 8 foot by 8 inch acrylic plastic. One hole at each of the four corners and an additional three holes evenly spaced across the top. Acrylic plastic tends to crack if you don't pre-drill the holes. You'll install the acrylic plastic with one inch screws, but wait until after the rooms are furnished to do this. For the sprinklered unit, you can attach the acrylic plastic using Velcro. To complete the sprinklered side of the demo unit, you'll need help from a qualified sprinkler fitter to install the fire sprinkler system. It's very important that the sprinkler works properly, so be sure to use a trained contractor. The riser should be located at the rear of the unit with a fire department connection for the water supply. The water supply can come from a hydrant or, in the case of the demonstration we'll show you in this video, an engine. One sprinkler should be placed near the center of the ceiling on the front panel number 10. Next, install a smoke alarm with batteries in each room. Mount these in the forward right area of the front ceiling panel and at least 12 inches from the sprinkler in the protected room. Place a large sign on the header to identify the sprinklered unit. 